Hey guys, Henning and Morton here from Flip Normals. In this The Substance Painter video, we are going to be looking at how we can add text in Painter. This is something which is strangely enough not very straightforward when it comes to... I would assume they would have a text tool. <laughs> they, uh, they don't have a text tool. It's like the most trivial thing in the world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But once you know how to do it, this is incredibly easy. What we are going to be doing now is uh, just make a new layer, make a regular paint layer, and then under alphas, you can search for font. And here you can see we have a bunch of different texts. I kind of assumed that these here were, they were just stencils or they were already pre-made, they were baked down. But these are actually live. So now if we were to, um, to click them, we now get some, we now can put them into our alpha. Uh, currently I have set this to be height, but you can set this to be whatever you want to. So now you can set this to be color and there you go. You can rotate this around by holding control and going up and down and make sure that your brush hardness is set to, uh, to uh, zero as well. So it's, it's really hard. One thing we're also gonna have to do is we're gonna have to set the pen pressure to be off. Cause right now you can see that we kind of get different sizes based on how hard we're pressing. Normally when it comes to this, you just wanna stamp it down once. You're, really, you're, not, you're not painting something, you know, you're purely pressing it down. It's like you're in a text dimension. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Keeps going up. And up. <laughs> yeah. So it's very simple to use this from the most basic functionality. You select a font you want. We only have a few limited fonts. You can't actually change that. And then you click. That could be the tutorial right there. That could be a tutorial, but it's not. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> there's more. So you can obviously change the color of it as well. And you can set this here to be whatever channel you want to. So if you want this to be height or uh, metallic, you know, you can you can do that. You can set the value of whatever you want to be. And, uh, you know, you can use some cool stuff with this. So if you set this back to only color, and now we go up to where we have uh, the alpha. This is where we can change what you know, pretty important. What does the text actually say? No, it can only say substance. <laughs> it can only say substance. They locked that. <laughs> uh, anything which is against substance, they uh, they can't do. So now we've written flip normals, and you go like, yay! But now you see ipnorma, <laughs> which, as far as I know, isn't correct. If you wrote Adobe, though, it would fit. Yeah, that would totally work. <laughs> hmm, I'm seeing a pattern here. <laughs> So what you got to do in order to fix this is you got to change the size. So if you see here, you have a little preview and this is where I have like the ip normal. Ip normals. <laughs> and if you hold on the shift key, now you can drag this with, uh, with more control. And you essentially drag this until you can see the entire thing within the circle. So if you go up a little too much, it kind of disappears. But then if you just set a the border, then you can click it. And we have some nice text. We really don't have too many options. We have some like you can flip it, which might be relevant, but. I guess if you're, maybe if you're stenciling it down on UVs that are flipped on like a mirrored axis. Yeah, that's pretty could, handy. Then you could flip it there and then it would be the right way around. Yeah. But that's pretty much the only one I can think of. One thing to be aware of as well is you need your flow to be all the way to 100. So this is, this is the most basic way of adding text to it. This is, you know, a lot of times when you're doing this general hard surface, you um, you want like labels and might just say danger, keep out, all mm. these kind of things. If you're doing characters, it's not incredibly important, but maybe for like a t-shirt or something, this is just so that you don't have to take it into Photoshop and yeah. do this stuff here. So, you know, you can use a different font if you want something in Japanese. You it's can. Probably good for us. Probably good for us. <laughs> We're moving to Japan pretty soon, so. Okay, so we can also do this with a fill layer. The way, the way we did this originally is you select a color to be yellow and now you're stamping down yellow and you get yellow. But if you want to change that later on, you can't really do that. Same if you're stamping down like the height value and all that. But we can do this if we use uh, fill layers. So yeah, that just makes it a little more procedural and you have a little you have more control in the future if you want to do you know iterations to it. Yeah, exactly. So let's just add a fill layer to the bottom and then we can do another one top. And now you want this here to be masked out. We want this... Uh, we want the text now to be uh, to be gray. The way we do this is we right click and we hit to add black mask and now we get a black mask and now nothing is going to be visible. And now if we go under add a, add a paint layer, now we can start to paint here. And if we now choose whatever font we want, we want something something nice like this, we can write, you know, you can write whatever you want. And then we can stamp this in and now you can see that we have 
we have now the, the text we want. The advantage here is that you can now change the color of this and you can change all the other attributes as well. So if you want to change the height value here, we can very easily do that. So we can stamp it out and add, add metallicness, whatever you want to it. So this is a pretty much exactly the same approach we had when we did our um, inserting a logo in mm, Painter. Yeah. So I use fill layers for pretty much everything like this because it's so much easier to change stuff later on. It's easier to initially paint in a regular layer, but then you might have issues where, hey, can you change the text color? You're like, oh, <laughs> no, I have to redo it. I can, but oh man. Yeah. So use fill layers a bunch when texturing. We're also going to show you a different example here. This is um, this is going to tie into anchoring. This is something we have covered before in one of our videos, but we're going to show a slightly more practical example. Let's do a regular layer, a regular paint layer, and then we can stamp down whatever we want here. And if we set this to be height, so now we have we have like a little stamp here, and we want this now to be included in the mask. If we see the mask between these two, what you, you get just by holding the Alt key and clicking on it, you can see that it's not included at all. So we want this to be included. The way we do this is we use anchoring. So if we go under the effect stack and we hit Add Anchor Point, we can now add an anchor point. This gets the name of the layer but we're not going to change that. Then we go under our uh, metal edge where, or your generator. Then we go to the bottom and we under my micro height, we select our anchor point. What's important is that the anchor or the layer with anchor point is below the one it's feeding into because it looks from the top to the bottom. And then we're going to set the reference channel to, uh, to height. And there you can see, uh, actually, we prepped a little bit too much beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to have to go under micro details and enable micro height as well. This is not going to be enabled by default. If you set this painted as a normal map, you are putting this into the normal map and just enable here and enable micro normal on the bottom. So now we have this enabled. It's pretty cool. Now you can disable this as well. And uh, you can see that you get this nice break up of the text. You can also go in and uh, you can add a filter to this. This is quite cool. So you can add a filter and now we can add a warp filter. The warp filter is one of my favorites because it just breaks everything up so nicely. Yeah, it's a pretty powerful filter and you can do warps on top of warps to yeah. get some pretty cool effects. Yeah, you really can. So now we can just really just screw this thing here up. Yeah, so you can do tons of cool stuff with uh, with this. Text is generally very easy to actually to use. It's not a um, it's not hard at all once you know it. Yeah. We go to um, the brush tool, then we go under alphas, just type font, and that's essentially that's essentially everything you need to know. And you can use this with bunch of other stuff like put a high channel into it, and now you can really get some nice cool effects like this. Really break this up with the generator. Yeah, and there's many different ways to use this. You know, if you just wanted to, want just wanted to use the height, or you combine it with height and color. You know, there's there's a lot of different use cases for this. Maybe it's you have those materials for the labels that you have with like typewriters and stuff. Mm. You can put that on top, like here with the metal material or something that's been stamped down onto like like a metal label or something, but uh, maybe some of the actual material has now disappeared. So now all you're left with is just like some bits of scratched off paint. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I, I really like just playing around with this, just adding substance everywhere to a little <laughs> substance cube or a little substance sphere. But yeah, this is particularly useful for uh, for decals. Uh, you know, obviously you're not just gonna add this, but uh, decals, danger, warning, Oh, I thought of another one for uh, ambulances. The flip option is good for ambulances. Oh, that's the true. Text is always flipped there. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's about flipped and for ambulances and, and then UVs. I think that's about <laughs> it. I can think about that. <laughs> yeah, I think that might be it. So if you want to see more content like this in the future, uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We're more than happy to take your suggestions to whatever it might be. We. Uh, we love having hearing suggestions for like weird little features in Painter we can do. Yeah, I mean, we would love to start pushing out more Painter content as well. You know, we are actively trying. It's a it's an awesome software. So, and th there have been some requests, but there are, if you have specific requests for anything Substance, you know, tweet at us right in the comments and we'll be more than happy to oblige. Perfect. So th thank you very much and we'll see you next time.